Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and to another video. On Friday, Cricut unveiled a new feature on the iOS and Android apps, so for iPads, iPhones and Android devices and it was to convert images to multiple layers so I'm going to share with you today how this works I'm going to show you how to update first of all so that you can get this new feature and then I'm going to do a couple of examples with a clip art and a photo so we can see how it works so without any further ado let's jump on in and get started The very first thing that we're going to need to do then is make sure that we have got the latest update of Cricut Design Space on our iPad or our phone so that we can make sure that we've got this new feature. So if I just go on to Cricut, it's going to come up with this on the screen. So it's telling me there is a new version available on the App Store. And it's asking me if I want to update it now or later. So I'm going to click on Update. And then that's going to take me straight into the app store and as you can see here there is a little update button that i can click on now before i do that what i'm going to do is just show you what's new and what cricket have said about this new update so if i click on more just here it tells me that i can now convert to layers it says yes you read that right now you can instantly convert an uploaded multicolored image into separate layers once you upload an image, select multiple layers and then select how many layers separated by colour you want to work with on the canvas. Anyone can preview the results of the Convert to Layer feature. To add it to your canvas, you'll need Cricut Access subscription. So let's now click on Update and let's do the update onto my iPad. Now that our update is complete then, this is the screen that you will be brought to when you first open Cricut Design Space on your iOS tablet or on your phone. So I'm using an iPad Pro today, but you will be able to get this update on iPhone, iPad and Android devices. So first of all, I'm going to click on the plus at the bottom just to get a new canvas up on the screen. And as you can see, it's just a plain blank canvas. The first thing that we need to do is upload an image. So if I click on upload at the bottom, it gives us four options. So we've got take a photo, select from photo library, browse files and open uploaded images. So I am going to choose the select from photo library option. So I've got a clip art that I've made myself. It is a recycling bin, which I've drawn because I'm going to make some stickers for my bins with this. So now because I'm a Cricut Access subscriber, I've got the automatic background remover tool as standard. So I can remove the background from this, even though I don't actually think this file has a background on it. I can apply that. And then it takes me through to this page which says convert upload to. So now we have got three options. Now if you were to go back to your desktop version of Cricut Design Space, when you upload an image you get two options. So what I would say is that single layer, which is this one in the centre, is the equivalent of the cut image on the desktop version. Then you've got flat graphic which says creates a single layer full full color image for print then cut projects with a home printer and that is the print then cut image which you can see on the desktop version on the right hand side of the screen now then we have this multiple layers and this is the new feature that we're interested in today so this says multiple layers beta create up to nine layers separated by color and it's got the green box around it because it's selected and then it also has the green Cricut Access A on there, which means that this is a Cricut Access function. So if you don't have a subscription, you won't be able to use it in its entirety, but you will be able to play around with it, I think, until you come to want to actually make your project. Then it's got the beta function on there as well. A lot of new features that Cricut brings into Design Space are beta. And all beta means is that it's currently in testing and us Cricut Design Space users are being used as guinea pigs in testing out the function and you can report to them if you have problems with it it might not always work perfectly when you're using it I know when Offset was first released we did find that sometimes it would work flawlessly other times it would freak out a little bit and um, you know it's took a long time for them to perfect Offset so that it works all the time really really well I imagine that will be the same for this particular feature 
So now that we've got that selected, let's click on next at the top. It then brings us through to the multiple layers portion of the screen. So we've got the edit function at the bottom, we've got layers, then we've got advanced as well. So first of all, you need to choose whether you are uploading a clip art or a photo. So in this instance, obviously this is a clip art because it's just two colors. And then we've got the output style. Now there's two different options for this. I don't necessarily agree with what they've written underneath each section for what it works best with. So stacked says creates a solid base layer that other layers stack on top of. Best for iron on HTV, paper and vinyl projects. And then you've got sliced which says creates layers that fit together like puzzle pieces without overlapping. Best for infusible ink projects. Personally I would use sliced for HTV because I regularly use different forms of iron on or HTV. So if I'm using, say, a regular hot flex with some glitter, I can't layer them over the top and stack them because they won't stick to the glitter. So I would have to use the sliced version and I'm used to doing that. So I would rather stick with that at the same time. So Again, this is a bit of a personal preference thing for you. So if you know that you like doing something in a certain way, I would recommend sticking with it. Don't change the way you do it just because Cricut have said that this function is better for this. If you do it better a different way that's better for yourself, stick with it. Then let's click on layers. So now we can see that this will let us have up to nine colors for our project. Now, this one only has two in it and it's automatically selected two. If I just click off it, you can see our two layers here at the bottom. It shows us our image. Then it shows us that together side by side, if we click on that one. Then the next one along is the base layer and that's the green layer. And then the next one along is the layer that we'll cut to overlap. Now, if I click back on layers again, if I wanted to, I could make this with nine colors, even though there's only two in it. If I click on the nine, it's gonna bring up nine layers in different colors with varying adaptations of the color there. Obviously, we're not gonna want to use nine colors in a two colored image, but it just gives you a chance to see how it can be adapted. If you look at that one, that is really sort of pushing the boundaries as to whether that is a layer or not. So it's a good idea to look what works best for your image. I'll click back on the two and I'm happy with that. Let's click on advanced now. And this now shows us the different sort of technical changes that we can make to our design. You can smooth it out by clicking on low or high. This basically rounds the edges and makes it less complex. It's going to make sure that if there's any bits sticking out that they are smooth brown to allow the machine to cut it a little bit easier. The next one is reduced noise and this is speckles and very fine details that may be sticking out. So I can see here on this corner where that bin is not quite smooth. That I think would probably clean that up a little bit so let's put it on high and does it change it it's smoothed it slightly i'd say but it's not made a massive difference and then you've got simplify which simplifies complex images to improve cutability so again just makes it really easy for your machine to cut i don't really think it's going to do very much on this particular image because it's not the most complex image by any stretch of the imagination let's click on next Here's our image then. At this stage, you are required to name your image. So let's just call it green bin and hit upload. That image now is uploaded into our images and it's put straight onto our canvas. So if we now come down to the bottom and click on layers, you can see we've got this grouped already. It does that automatically. You've got your green bin and then you've got your green bin black layer and then your green bin green layer and it is all perfect and ready to go. So what we can do now is go through to make it. We all see two mats that we want to cut on. So we've got the black one and the green one and that is perfect and ready to go. If I clicked on next, it's going to find my machine and start trying to do a cut. So I'm not going to do that for now, but that's basically how it works for a clip art. Let's now upload a 
photograph and see how it works with that. Okay, so I'm going to just go to upload again and I'm going to select from photo library on this occasion. This is the image I'm going to use. It is a mug of tea. So again, I'm going to remove the background with my automatic background remover. Might take a while because those colours around the bottom are quite similar. Okay, I think that's actually done a really, really good job, hasn't it? Look how smooth the lines look at the bottom of the mug. I'm very impressed with that. Let's click on apply and move on. Again, we've got our three different options and you can see the differences straight away. So multiple layers, looks a little bit speckly, not as good as the flat graphic, definitely, and the single layer for vinyl or whatever in the middle. That looks a perfect cut. Not too sure how this is going to turn out, so I'm clicking on the multiple layers, click on next. Here is the image then. So first of all, like I said, we need to change this from a clip art to a photo. There it is. It brings back quite a lot of the technical details on our image. Let me just click on clip art and show you what it looks like without. So you can see a bit of the detail with the S at the bottom. You can see the dog's eye in the centre, but that's not really what we're looking for. So we definitely need to change it to a photo. And then I think, I think we'll leave it as stacked because I think that for this demonstration it will be less complicated. Let's go through to layers. Now because this image is quite a complicated one, it has already selected the nine different colours as you can see at the bottom. So if I click like this, we can see them all together. So we can see what order they go in from the lightest all the way through to the darkest. But now is when we need to go down to the layers and we need to play about with the amount of layers that we want to put into this particular project. So for me personally, I don't really want to be cutting nine mats for an image. And also don't forget how thick that sticker is going to be with nine layers of vinyl because effectively... It's almost a full coverage with each one. So it's going to be a super duper thick sticker. Let's go down to about four colours and see what that looks like. Max looks a bit odd in the middle, doesn't he, with that. Um, he doesn't look like very doggy. Let's try five. He looks a bit better now. We've lost a bit of the detail at the bottom of the mug. We've got where it says studios is missing really. Um, let's try six. I think six really needs to be the maximum. It does bring back the detail into the dog and it brings back quite a lot of detail at the top with the clouds and stuff. And I think that would work pretty well. It's a really nice smooth edge around the design, which I like. Um, you can see this little blob here. I wouldn't really like that one in there. So I wish there was an erase function here. So a bit like when you're doing the erase background, you can select a pen and you can colour over bits you don't want. Because in reality, I'd get rid of that there. I would get rid of all these dots down the edge of the mug here. And I would probably take out a few of the different random dots that are on the hand because I think it'd make it easier both to cut and to weed. This is going to definitely need reverse weeding if I were to actually make it on vinyl. Let's go through to advanced, see if we can get rid of some of those things. Now, with the bin image that we did first, all of these were set automatically to none, but Cricut Design Space has changed the noise and the simplify on this one to low. I'm going to click on high with both of them. And well, actually, let's put the other one on as well and see if it makes a difference. I can't see a difference. The reason I can't see a difference is because this box is in a stupid place, I think, personally. I wish that you could move the box by dragging it over like you can on desktop with the font box selector. It would be so much easier if I could move this box over here and then I can play with those toggles and see the difference that it's making on my image because at the moment we'll make the differences and I can't really see the difference that it's making to my image. It's moving very, very slightly as you can see, but I can't see what it's doing because this box is in the way, so that's a bit stupid. Um, that's definitely something I'm going to report to them and say I don't like about this feature. 
but this is probably as good as it's going to get so we've got six colors six layers it's still going to be pretty thick it's going to be something that i'm going to probably put onto a book cover or something like that but it just gives you an idea of what you can achieve with this particular new feature so what do you think of it do you think you'll use it do you think it's a good feature do you think it needs a lot more work what do you think what would you change about this new multiple layers feature Effectively, we're not really making SVGs because we can't export them at the moment. Hopefully, that will come soon. Um, but I think it's pretty good. I think I'd probably use it more for clip art than photos. I think photos are going to be more difficult to manipulate. It needs a lot of work, in my opinion, to make it a lot more user-friendly and also to give the features like being able to take out things that you don't want on the image you are a little bit sort of stuck with what they think you should include in your picture. Maybe you don't actually want that hand on the side. And the only way to get rid of it is to go all the way back to the very beginning to where you have um, removed the background and remove all of that part manually yourself as well. So I do think it needs some work, but it's a good starting place. Unfortunately, this feature is only available currently on iOS and Android. So you won't be able to pick it up on the desktop just yet so if you are a desktop user you're going to have to hang tight probably for another month or so I would have thought until this comes through onto desktop but it's definitely something that I think you should check out I hope you found this video to be useful and interesting if you have drop me any questions comments down below and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon for another video take care bye bye